I think my work is pretty bold, and I'm just not a pussy about stuff. I don't want to do anything unless it's going to make my chakras tingle and needs to exist and has like, mm, behind it. My hubby Simon is the same way, and we kind of push each other to be more extreme. People always ask me, what is my inspiration? And I'm like, I don't know, that question is impossible and obsolete. First of all, we live in a ridiculous time where it's like, it's not like the olden days. Inspiration now is like everything. It's like online. It's just a chaotic barrage of imagery. It's insane. But the thing that is totes consistent for me is that my hubby Simon always inspires me because he is, and I hope he doesn't see this, but he is the most creative, adorable, smart, inspiring little being, and the truth is that when you're happily married, <laughs> it's kind of like nothing matters. I have a type. Good looking, not so bright. That's my men. <laughs> and autumns, low contrast autumns. I always go for an autumn. A friend of ours, Gerard Back, his name is, he's a fashion designer of your and he said, oh, you should go on a date with Jonathan Adler. You'd really like each other. So it was a good blind date because somebody had taken the time to think that we were actually compatible. We weren't just being slung together because we were both male and breathing. He'd actually thought, oh, well, they would hit it off because they are both naughty and fun and silly and whatever we are. Being playful and being silly is our relationship. I don't know if we've ever not been playful and silly. What else could you be? Ball. So after the day, I was like, huh, I fancy that little creature. Um, and I called our mutual friend and was like, yeah, I want to like see him again. And date number two was what sealed the deal. And that was that. And then bomb chicka wow wow and scene 19 years. Jonathan and I have a lot in common. It was easy for us to establish this shared worldview because we came from different backgrounds, but there were some key similarities in that both of our parents were um, kind of unconventional people who didn't have conventional expectations of us. So we'd both been able to embark on these nutty careers that in strange fields that people don't really often go rushing into. So here's my new book, which as you know, comes out September 3rd, yeah. The Asylum. If there were cameras here, I would say don't cover up the um, <laughs> bloody thing with or the Or the title. There you go, thank you. Michael Coors says, the fashion world is hysterical, and Simon Doonan is the one man who sees it and tells it absurdly like it is. Stop it. Michael Coors. Michael Kors. Gave me a blurb. Isn't that who you just Simon said? Simon Doonan, no, that was Mark Jacobs. Oh, but no, you said, I'm like, oh. Did I? Uh-huh. Oh, I don't sorry, know why I bother wrong. sometimes. <laughs> As a gay, I was uniquely qualified to succeed in the arts because as an entrepreneur or an artiste or designer or whatever the f*** you want to call me, like you have to be resilient. Resilience to me is the key to everything and ain't nobody more resilient than a gay. Because when you're gay, it's just like whatever, no rules apply. I can be whatever the f*** I want, nothing matters, and none of the standards apply. I think if you're gay, you don't have so many preconceived ideas about how the world should be, how you should live. So it sort of is very liberating in that way. Sometimes I wonder, who's the baby of the family? Is it Liberace or Johnny? Just kidding. <laughs> Except not really. There's a little competition for Sliman's attention. Unfortunately, the winner, it's not right. I like to breastfeed him on this couch. I think in order to create dynamic, creative new ideas, you have to sort of push away the conventional things. Paisley is an inadvisable ping pong table surface, but I don't think we could live without a Paisley covered ping pong table. Not everything in your home has to have a big rationale or explanation. Sometimes it just is. What? <laughs> Our home is very flamboyant, very fun. I completely subscribe to Jonathan Adler's idea that your home should be an antidepressant. I can't think of anything worse than coming home to some minimalist bunker. But for us, this is how we like to live. I guess our house is a reflection of the fact that both Slime and I are super duper amped up visually, that we have zero rules and life 
and spaces should be bold and memorable. I am living my truth in that, like, I truly believe that when I am on my deathbed about to kick the bucket, I will, like, look back and remember this place and think, that was rad. Everyone deserves to have an amazing spouse, husband, lover, and a house full of chakra tingling shit. Boom. It's like you go into my house and you turn a corner and there's just this big ass owl staring out at you and just owning the wall. It's like, check this out, this is just rope. Hello? Hello.